Well, let's, let's take, take that conversation of engagement in the public one step further. So I, I think you're right. I think healthcare has gotten more people um, in, in watching what's happening in Washington than, than other issues. And uh, very interesting, uh, Rasmussen, a uh, very reputable poll firm, uh, this week, uh, April 4th, actually, uh, has, they've been doing generic congressional ballots throughout the year. So if you were to vote for a Republican or a de Democrat, who would you vote for? And April 4th, so what was that, four days ago, the highest number of uh, Republicans, so it's Republican 47% to Democrat 38%. That's the highest by 1% that Republicans have come out in that poll in recent times. So uh, the question is, what's going to happen in November? Do you think Republicans will take the House back? Well, I do think that they're, the pendulum's going to swing. And, you know, the pendulum's going to swing a bit because, in general, the public, I think, likes balance. And so, right now, you've got all one side kind of running everything. And I think there's been a far overreaching, I think, when the president made the decision to outsource to congressional leadership, Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi, the spending uh, legislation, the health care legislation, the energy cap and trade legislation. He's taken a bit of a black eye because it's been uncontrollable. And I do think the pendulum's going to swing. And it very well could be a wave election just based on, it's not just Republicans that are involved in some of the uh, uh, frustrations that are going on because they're out of power at the grassroots level. I, I think there are a lot of independent voters uh, and some Democrats that are really saying, hey, this is not what we want. This is not what we need to keep the country strong, to keep the country great, uh, to create prosperity. Uh, that I've known in, you know, for, my pa for past generations, and we want our kids and our grandkids to to do well and not have to worry about paying off all this debt down the road. So I think there is going to be a wave or a swing. And when you have a wave election, it'll be interesting because that's where you get candidates that win that you never thought would win. And it brings people along. And I think it could capture members of both parties from the perspective of just an arrogance of Washington that's been out of touch. I really think so. And Washington has not had a recession. I mean, if you go to Washington, things are humming along. It's high property values. And uh, they've been adding a lot of jobs. And you don't sense it. And I think as pe people, you know, they get, they get stuck there. They get stuck in seniority. And uh, you know, it's part of the egos and the power. And uh, they don't go home to their districts. Uh, you know, I come back every weekend. And I think people have lost touch. And I think you know, there's going to be a wake up or a realization that the pendulum will swing. How far it swings, I'm, I'm not sure. But I think it will swing. Um, just to kind of close up and maybe a little more uh, introspective uh, question. So here you are. Uh, you It probably feels like the election just got over and you're about ready to start another one. But um, so your your first year and a half in, in Congress, what, what has... What's been kind of your, your biggest surprise? Any aha uh -huh moments? What, what's the experience been like? So biggest surprise as a freshman, getting 1,000-page bills, 2,000-page bills with no time to read them. And I'll never forget sitting in my room. Uh, I live in a little 8 by 8 room with a bunk bed. You know, I live with three other members, so it's like being in college again. Um, <laughs> But you know, at almost midnight, I get an email on my BlackBerry saying, you know, here's a link to the stimulus bill, $787 billion. We'll be voting on this tomorrow. And I couldn't get a physical copy of the bill until three days after we pa voted on it, until we passed it. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. And then the same thing happened on this energy legislation where at 3 in the morning, you get an email saying, here's a 400-page amendment. We'll be voting on this tomorrow. And it's no wonder you're going to get bad public policy out of that, because you literally even have handwritten notes as a part of the amendment process. And this is not handwritten notes from rank-and-file members like myself or freshman members, but senior leaders that are part of this system that have created, I think, some of the problems that exist. And because of their authority or seniority, uh, they get to do that. And that's where it's wrong. And I think that's where, again, the hope is of younger members on both sides pushing back on the process that exists so that we have a right to know what we're voting on, the public has a right to know what we're voting on. Uh, and uh, uh, that's been my biggest, I think, observation or frustration uh, overall in the past year. Great. Well, Congressman, thank you so much for taking your time to be with us today. Thank you. We really appreciate it. So, okay, so I just. Um, just a couple things quickly before we, we close. Um, don't forget to sign up for next month's Legislative Breakfast on May 14th. We're going to hear from state leaders on Minnesota's economic outlook and challenges that lie ahead. Sponsorships are still available, so see Judy for that. Um, that does conclude our program. Again, uh, Congressman Paulson, where did he go? Oh, he sat down. Thank you for staying. Um, 
And also, um, our sponsors, finally, Grand Casino, Mille Lacs, and Hinkley, our series sponsor. Thank you so much, Bob, for that. Citizens Independent Bank, Peg's Countryside Cafe. Bring those cookies home. Your kids will love them if you don't eat them first. Siler and Associates, Twin West Political Action Committee, Voyager Bank, Swank Audiovisual, and Comcast. Have a great day and a fabulous weekend.